Hey guys, this is Liz Reed of Cuddles and Rage, and today we are gonna make miniature clay pumpkins. They're really fun to do, and they're really easy, and not as messy as keeping the real thing, because they don't rot, and you don't have to worry about the pumpkin seeds, which is actually my favorite part, because I like eating them, but hey, they're really cute, and it's something fun that you can make with um, your friends, or also with the kiddos. So, what materials do we need today? Um, we are going to start off with sweet potato clay. I know you're thinking, you're like, that's just orange clay. No, actually, whenever you get into clay colors, uh, this is a very specific color. Orange clay is really bright, and if you try and photograph it, um, it'll kind of come out blown out. So I always prefer to use sweet potato, and that's what I use for our character, Dr. D Dr. Dequito, in our webcomic. Okay, and then you're also going to use a little bit of brown clay. And then we are going to use a little bit of black clay for the eyes. And in terms of tools, we are going to stick with a pin for our eyes and for our mouth. And then also you're gonna use wire for your stem. And you're gonna use braided wire, and we'll get into that a little bit later on why we're gonna use braided wire. So let's start off with making our pumpkins. So clean off your slate. I always like to use wax paper uh, because it keeps my surface clean and also it keeps the clay clean. So I'm just using a little bit of orange. I'm actually gonna add a little bit more to this. Here's my big piece, um, cause it's a little bit too small of a pumpkin for me. So here is the pumpkin. So I'm just gonna roll it into a ball. And now it's gonna be kinda hard for you to see, but here we are, roll, 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 roll. I like to use the palms of my hands um, for it. So let's see here. There you go, a little bit more. And then we're gonna take our pen. See, standing up, we're gonna take our pen and then we're going to do the lines. Okay, you're just doing some lines. So you wanna get the texture in it. You wanna go all the way around the pumpkin. You don't wanna squeeze your pumpkin too tight. So you don't wanna smush the clay. So just keep moving it around lightly. And if you get like some extra little texture spots, just kinda of press it in with your finger. Okay, and let's do a little texture at the top too. Because if you just texture the sides and then you look at it from the top view, then it won't look as pumpkin-y. Okay, actually I don't like that little smidge. You don't have to be a perfectionist, but if you mess up, you can always just kinda use your fingers to smooth it out again. Okay, then I want my pumpkin standing tall, so you just kinda press down the base. See, the base that so you can stand on its own. Okay, and so now I'm gonna add the eyes for my pumpkin. So, in my last tutorial for the miniature ghost, I had a smaller pin. I actually want my pumpkins to have bigger eyes, so I use kind of a, a bigger tip. So I'm just gonna press in for the eyes. And then next, I want to um, think about um, my expression. And so I think because this pumpkin is scared that it's pumpkin season and then you might get carved, I'm gonna go with a surprised look. Or like kind of like a scared, shocked look. <gasps> I always like to like <laughs> make the noise of the expression I'm trying to do. And sometimes if you don't know what expression you're trying to make, um, you can always, you know, look at yourself in the mirror and do that expression. If you look at a lot of um, behind the scenes stuff for uh, stop motion animators or I guess puppeteers, then uh, you'll see that they keep mirrors by them all the time so they can kind of practice those expressions. So, I have my holes, I have my mouth. I kind of want to add some stressed outlines, some bags, just to emphasize how stressed out he is. Now, if you're doing with this with little kids, then I'd probably just keep it simple, but if you kind of want to do it with older kids or you're doing it yourself, you know, I would kind of add that little detail because those details go a long way. And so next is our black clay. So you don't need a lot of it because you're just using it for the eyes. So you just want to pinch a little bit of it off. And since I used bigger holes for my eyes, I can use more clay than I typically would for eyes because he's looking shocked. Whenever I make my clay figures, I always like to think about what kind of story I'm making. 
Okay, there we go. So I'm gonna take his eyes, and you can just use your fingers. The bigger, the bigger pieces, you can just use your fingers to pick up. Um, the smaller pieces, sometimes I have to use the pen. So let me move the pin out of the way. Let me just focus on the eyes. So push your eyes in there. And you don't want it just to be loose because when it bakes, it can still roll out. You want to actually push it in just a little bit. Not too much that you smush the eye because you still want some texture. Just enough that you know that it's like sealed. So there's my guy. He looks, you look scared, sir. Okay, so the next part is um, just dealing with your wire. So this is the stem that we're gonna make. And the reason why I use wire, and specifically braided wire, is that it kind of eats into the clay a bit better. It um, kind of just sticks to it. So if you just use um, just one piece of wire without it being braided, then it would just pull out right easily. So if you're doing this with a kid and you don't want to mess with wire, or if you're like, I don't have wire, you could use a toothpick, but just know that it'll come out pretty easily because there's nothing for the clay to hold on to. And you could, uh, you know, you could glue it in later, but I recommend using this. And also, uh, you can bend the clay to kind of give it some personality so it's not just like, and uh, not the clay, sorry, the wire, just so it's not sticking out crazy. So, here's our wire, and then let's roll out some brown. So, I like to roll out my clay with my um, middle finger and roll it like this. Just make a little snake and then just pinch off the bottom part and leave a little extra. It's okay if you need some extra. And then just wrap it around. You know, the key to, to making these little figurines is um, you wanna make something that's stable. Um, you wanna think about, as you get into bigger pieces, making some armature so your guys can stand on their own. Okay, so here's my little stem and I'm going to stick them in the top of my pumpkin head. So I'm just gonna stick them in that little hole right there. There we go. Stick them in there. And then if you look, you're like, oh man, I messed up all my brown. That's okay. Just get it all fixed back in. And you can move it, your stem a little. My stem's a little long, but that's okay. I'm into it. Um, and then I think it kind of gives them a little bit of personality. And then I don't like to end it there. I like to um, also add some detail to the stem because I think whenever you take a few seconds to give it some detail, even if it's cartoony detail, I think if you notice a lot of different clay styles, you have like some realistic food styles, you have some cartoony styles, you have people's like own crazy styles. So for me, I like just adding little texture. And then there's my little pumpkin guy, just in time for Halloween. A cute little decoration that won't take up that much space and he can just sit next to you um, at your desk or next to you when you sleep, just staring at you, shocked, kind of creepy, but hey, <laughs> he's cute. All right, thank you so much for listening and for watching the video. And if you are interested in checking out more cool diorama, um, stuff or miniature clay stuff, check out our site, cuddlesandrage.com. We post web comics and food jokes and dioramas twice a week. And we're also everywhere on social media. So check us out on Instagram or on Twitter or Tumblr. Have a good night.